What can I do for you? What do you got for me right now? Wow. Um, I stumbled across your content just recently. And um, man, I'll tell you, I, I was uh, blessed. I had a lot of opportunities because uh, my parents, you know, just many things aligned. So I had opportunities in context. I was doing great in business, all that stuff. But the only side that sucked was with women. I would find myself just on dating apps, hours, uh, two, three hours a day. And then I had my business making, um, when I first started my business, six figures. And then I would just go back, like I would shrink and then be on dating apps. It was terrible, hours on Instagram, just searching girls. And I didn't know, you know, why I sucked with women, man. I found your content and I was a little bit not sure. Watch more videos. Man, I'll say this. Thank you. Like what you're doing is just changing lives. It's insane. I'm free right now. Red pill, 100%. You're welcome. Okay. So what are you stuck on or is this just a big thank you? Uh, no, I just, just want to say thank you, man. Um, Good. I'm not actually chasing women right now. You know what he said, uh, the last guy on the call, mm -hmm. single mom, 40 year old, man, that's, that's bad. So 28 not, year old dating a woman, it's like 20 years young. Well, not 20 years, but you know, you get the point almost 15 years older. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. So, uh, just, uh, uh one question. Um, I kind of feel inside that, you know, I have my business. I don't really worry about money now. I live in Mexico mm -hmm. and, um, should I just kind of just on the side search for a girl or just like that for later on? How old are you? Uh, 26. Next month, I'll be 24. Yeah, you shouldn't be in a monogamous long-term relationship in your 20s, dude. Okay. That's okay. like the growth phase. It's like laying the groundwork for your life. You're already making a lot of money. Yep. You're, you're the founder of the business? Like you're the entrepreneur behind it all? Uh, it's a family business. So, and okay. I got my, my own stuff out of it. Okay, good, good. So, you know, work on building that up. I'm not saying don't date women. I'm not saying, you know, okay. don't expose yourself, but just don't, don't make the goal finding a girlfriend or a wife. You probably get some cultural pressure. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, there's obviously going to be, you know, religion and culture to find a good girl and settle down. And why don't you have some kids and blah, blah, blah. You got lots of time to do that. You're not in the same timeline as women. Um, this is a different time than what it was, you know, from your parents' age and your grandparents' age. Um, you've got plenty of time, you know, wait till you're 30. Okay. okay. And date her for a good couple of years to see what she's made of. Like, don't just, okay, I found a good one. It's been a good year. Let's plan the wedding and get everything going and, and, and do this. Date her for a good couple of years, two years, see what she's really made of. Let stress get applied to the relationships. See how she responds to it. Does she freak out? Can she handle it properly? Right. Look for good, strong indicators like that. Okay. Uh, I have one question. Um, mm. This obviously, I, I know. You know, what are you going to say? But um, what do you what do you think on uh, you know this whole Russian Ukrainian dating uh, kind of woman? Yeah, I've They're, covered that before. There's a lot of guys that think that uh, if they like the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, sort of thing. Yeah. Right. No, you, you know, I, I've read that. You know. Don't date uh, American woman because the whole feminist movement and, you know, they don't care about gender roles, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And women in Ukraine and Russia, they're feminine. And But I also heard guys say, you know, th they're going to scam you. They just want your money or the, the visa, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm really well, there's sure. that component to it, too. And it's true. It doesn't matter if it's Colombian, Venezuelan, Russia. It doesn't matter, dude. It, it's like. The grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. The grass is greener where you water and fertilize it, where you're standing. Okay. So if you, I mean, if you have a thing for Eastern European women, so let's put it to that. If you okay. have a thing for them, then I would say, fine, you know, then date those kind of women if you, you know, if you find them attractive, but every culture has a different thing about them that you got to understand. Like Eastern European women are very, very difficult to manage on a long-term basis. They've got very high demands. And when you bring somebody from a foreign country to your country, um, they're going to get domesticated within the next year to two years top. So whatever happens in that culture, they're going to start to look around. I mean, it's part of the reason why um, Eddie Murphy added that joke to his uh, stand up back in the 80s. I, I can't remember if it was delirious or raw, but Unfufu, the zebra chick that he brought back. And if you haven't seen the stand up, you know, you got to go watch the clip. 
Huff, so, Eddie, right? Within a year or two, and that was in the 80s. It was recognized back then that that was common ground. Nothing's changed. It's just gotten worse. You're not going to get better women going to a different country. Okay, okay. You're going to get different cultural. You're going to get different looks. European women oh. are, are different from Asian women, from Venezuelan women. They look slightly different. They might have different cultural values. Yeah, they might be more feminine, but here's the thing. This is where most guys go wrong. They'll just import them and they think, oh, I brought this feminine woman or everything will be fine. But you still have to have rock solid frame. You just can't rest on the laurels of, okay, I got a foreign bride. Everything's going to be good. We're done. You, you still have to have rock solid frame. And you still have to date her for a good couple of years before you wife her up if that's what you're planning to do, you know, to have kids and stuff like that. Slow it down. You know, make sure it's not like a whirlwind. Let's get this done in the next six to 12 months. It's no. There's still a two year vetting period. See what she's made out of. Okay, so two years. Two years. Minimum. Um, if you didn't catch the earlier episodes of the Before the Train Wreck, Sean Smith wrote this book. He used to run the show with me. You should read it. And he talks about that in his book from his clinical practice. Okay, yeah, because, uh, for example, just one thing. I, I haven't hit the gym in years. Part of it is just I, I've been all my time devoted into my business and just, just kind of like, Look like look at my arms. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it's. I You're look, skinny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm look so. I I I want to. I want to think I have to work more on that. That um, you know, going back and chasing a woman and. That, I would I would I, spend more time on, fi like physical self care. Whether it's lifting weights, get into some kind of combat sport. Have you read my book? No, I just bought it. Okay, good. Um, be because I cover stuff like that in the book, but do something for self-care so that you create the optics of masculinity and strength. Because it's one thing to try to lead a woman and to have her enter your frame, and whether you import her from Russia or if you you know, get with a Mexican girl or anything like that. It's one thing to try to lead her and have her in your frame. It's much, much easier if you look the part too, right? If you're strong, if you have broad shoulders, narrow waist, six pack abs, right? Like you take care, you know, you've got combat skills, you know how to beat the crap out of somebody if the knee, you know, is called upon you, if you get into a difficult situation. Women will enter the frame of a guy like that and say yes more often to him if he looks more of the part. Sure, you can set that all aside and you can have rock solid game and you can, you know, try to run that relationship, but without looking the part, it's going to be harder for you, man. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because what I have seen is um, with the girls that I have gone out and, and some, not all, but they know I'm doing well. And a lot of times the money that I'm making, it's just, it doesn't make the cut. Like it's not, I, 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 I have seen this not enough when they see, well, he has this part boiled down, but this other parts, I'm not so sure. How much, how much money do you make on an annual basis in USD? Roughly. Uh, about six hundred thousand on an annual basis. That's what you pay yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just that's profit. You make more than enough money, dude. You make plenty uh, of money. Okay. There's like you're probably in the top one percent of all income earners in all of Mexico at that rate, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So money's not the problem for you. You know, for you, it's things like game. It's like the optics of masculinity. You know, it's understanding and actually applying the red pill to your real life on a day to day basis. Those are the things that matters. And here's the other thing too: guys like you are a target for manipulative women. You've got to be very, very careful because as soon as a chick hears, "Oh, this guy Carlos makes six hundred thousand dollars USD a year in a country like Mexico, where that goes really far." women will act. That's why I tell guys, give it a couple of years, see what she's really made of, see if she's really in your frame. Because it's easy for them to act for six or 12 months to get the ring and get the wedding. Do it for two years straight. That's a lot harder, right? So guys, like you got to be careful because, you know, if you let the wrong chick in your life and she's got mental disorders and, you know, you get married and have kids, dude, guys like you can get destroyed in the family court system. I don't know what it's like exactly in Mexico, but it's probably pre you know pretty similar to what it is in U.S. and Canada. Oh, it's bad. It's yeah. bad. Yeah. And, and yeah. My, my uncle, his, uh, his wife just shitted on him. And The man, biggest he, thing for you right now, Carlos, is you need to understand game and red pill dynamics to a T to protect yourself. Okay. It is, it is probably the most important thing. I mean, you know, beyond, you know, the optics of masculinity and strength and game and, you know, significance and all that sort of stuff, but you got to be really, really careful, man. Cause if you get bamboozled by some hot chick, 
but you know, just, you know, you let her in your life and all of a sudden, you know, you think, oh, this girl just gets me, you know, all these other girls never really got me before, but this one actually understands me for a change. You got to be super careful with that. So if you take anything away from this conversation, date for two years before you do anything with them. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, all right. All read right. my book and read Sean's book too, because that'll really help you out. Okay, you know, with the vetting screen, process. So I'll take a screenshot. What's that? Hey, can you put it on the screen so I'll take a quick screenshot? It's it's called the Tactical Guide to Women. Okay. Got it. All right. There you go. All right. Well, let me know how it works out for you, man. You know, come back all in a few right. months and let me know how you're doing. All right. All right, man. Thank you. All right. See you later, brother. Peace.